All right. On today's show, we're talking about reality television. So we brought in some big guns. Julia, Megan, how are you? Thank you. We're doing good. We're ready. Alex is in his uh, bunker up north, <laughs> um, Ted Kaczynski style. <laughs> Unabomber headquarters. Undisclosed location. I'm moving locale every episode. So very good. We'll see how this works. That's true. The last three episodes, you've been in three different places. So man mm-hmm. of mystery. But there you go. obviously but today, forget, reach out to everybody here. So yeah, no idea what you just said, but that's all right. Um, <laughs> so we're talking reality TV today. Um, and I guess we wanted to talk about it, Alex, because it's kind of one of the big phenomenons of our lifetime is reality TV was not a thing really till probably like the 2000s, maybe the late 90s. And now it's yeah, just the startings of it there. Yeah. And now it's just like, it's its own genre. Like it's, it's massive. Um, and probably the first major reality TV show would be like the bachelor. Would you say girls? Yeah, I think so. That's the earliest one I ever remember mm-hmm. or my sweet 16, like MTV, my sweet 16. Was that earlier? I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think, I think MTV was everything on MTV was slightly more niche. I think. Yeah. Because like, for the most part, like the bachelor was the first thing on like main cable television, I would say. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. like, and now it was like a huge phenomenon. And then it was like, I think only like a handful of couples have like survived. And I think the first one is still together, still together. Hmm. So it's like that. Yeah. Yeah. Reality dating shows. I've always, I've always found kind of weird. And I, I, I didn't ever particularly like The Bachelor. It just felt so weird or The Bachelorette because it's like one guy and like 30, 30 women competing for him, basically, or vice versa. It, I just found it very cringeworthy. The Bachelor can go either way. And like same thing with The Bachelorette. Like it's like some seasons are really good and some are really mm-hmm. not good. But the best, in my opinion, is Bachelor be, uh, Bachelor in Paradise. And mm. there's really no no because it's like they get the all-stars from like a bunch of different seasons and then they just throw them on an island with a lot of alcohol Wait, so the, and, um, what oh, sorry, i was gonna say so the, the all-stars that's those are the people who like finished and then didn't have a couple afterwards they like they broke yeah. up or is it just like, the, like the most memorable favorites. people on the show or like were. fan favorites like it's all people who didn't end up in like the main and then there are people who were the bachelor or bachelorette who or did get engaged who do end up on it too because it doesn't end up working out okay yeah and then I guess like I would definitely say the bachelor was first there have been different iterations but I think the new kind of dating show that has resonated with younger people and become maybe even more popular than the bachelor would be love is blind Mm -hmm. and I was introduced to the show thanks to um Julia and Megan and I I really enjoyed the second season. Um, yeah. That was probably probably my favorite because I actually found the people fairly normal and somewhat likable. Mm-hmm. And then the third season was diabolical, in my opinion. Um, so, like, obviously it's on Netflix, but what else do you think about that show kind of made it a good innovation of the dating kind of reality show? I think... What well, I think the fact that they don't see each other at all was like the main thing that people were like, oh, what the heck? But then also looking at how people react to them seeing the person that they love emotionally solely first in person mm-hmm. and people's like actual reactions to I'm not physically attracted to you, mm-hmm. I think is what like people really got people hooked. And it's just like crazy personalities. Insane. I'm sure part of it, a lot of it is scripted, but even like, especially the third season, I feel like I remember us talking about it because in the first season, the couples are still together mm-hmm. um, that got married. Second season, everybody got divorced. Mm-hmm. The third season is just a whole hot mess. Mm-hmm. Because I think now people just do it for the fame a lot yeah. versus like actually finding love because they know how big it got. It's one of those things where I think the concept is so bad shit that like you kind of watch it because you're like, I literally don't believe that that's possible. Mm-hmm. Um, and like then, the ultimatum. 
is like the same stupid stuff. Oh, that, that one like, is outrageous. It should just be called Home Records. Yeah. But it's like, sorry, what were you going to say? Oh, no, I was going to say, for those who don't know, because I don't think, Alex, you know what the ultimatum is. Mm-hmm. It's literally like people in long term relationships who one of them gives the other an ultimatum, like, and then they go on this show date other people and then have to decide if they want to get engaged to the person they were with or start something new with someone else and then i I have heard of this one yeah sorry sorry i I have heard this one before but it's just it's i don't know but you said reality tv being unscripted that i thought it was scripted. (laughs) (laughs) sorry go ahead ultimatum was so bad it was so bad so bad Cause it's like, love is blind is like this thing where it's like the idea of falling in love with someone without looking at them doesn't make any sense logistically. And then, so you kind of are like, that's an outrageous concept. Let me tune in see what that's like. And then you just see the absolute shit show aftermath uh-huh. of like it, of this whole thing. And I think we talked about this before, like when we would, the three of us would like watch it together where it was like, I could literally never do this because it's too stupid. Uh-huh. Like it's so um what is it it's like it's so optimistic in a way that makes no sense tangibly like in the real world to be like oh I love this person I don't even know what they look like I've never done anything with them and I'm gonna marry them in a month Mm -hmm. yeah so that's what always put me off of reality dating shows it's like you're you're known the person for one month and you're competing against other people Mm -hmm. and so how really how much are you gonna get to know somebody there Mm -hmm. um in that time, like well enough, but also how many, I actually have a question for you guys. Um, how many times have in like Love is Blind, have they finally met afterwards? And it was like a, ooh, and you don't like the person, like how they look. Oh, or like there's an to. obvious, it like happens. a, oh. Most of the time, some Most of them, it's always, it's always the men who like really react viscerally to Well, in the, the second women. season, Mallory wasn't a fan of Sal. No, but she never explicitly said it though. Well, men, men are visual creatures, so we like. <laughs> yeah. We're like Jessica wasn't a fan of Mark. She thought he was too short. He was also twenty five. He was also twenty five. There's like a ten year age gap. So, whoa, whoa, wait. Trend, wait. Another trend on Love Is Blind is these like twenty five year old dudes and, and these like, like thirty year old men. women who are like going onto this dating show, and then mm-hmm. all of these like thirty year old women are freaking out about the immaturity of the twenty five year old man. And it's like 25 year old man. I don't know why he wants to get married at 25. Like all the freaking time. It it just, it's mm-hmm. insane to me. And I think that these dating shows is, I think it's mostly because people in society have a very specific concept of what love is and like how to fall in love and get married. And like, that's why so many people get married when they shouldn't mm-hmm. or like, or have a partner when they shouldn't. And so like, the reason this shit blows up is because like the social idea of like falling in love is the problem that ruins things. Mm-hmm. Wow. That was deep. Thank you. She's I, deep. I, I, was, and I have a master's degree now. So there you go. I, I was just going to naturally say that, that one went deeper. I was going to naturally segue this into, oh, younger guys, older women. Let's talk about Milf Manor because that was another one. Oh, you guys God. <laughs> And then we went and then went down like a nice a nice little uh in-depth view there. No, so. we, we can talk about Mill Manor because Wait. that's that's like I think it's too far. It's so far. Mm. Too far. I, I, I saw some because Mitch mentioned it and you guys want to talk about it. And I was like, what is this show? So I looked up some like trailers and some clips and stuff, and I was like, what what is going on with the world? What is what is happening here? I like a lot of reality TV. I think that's a line it's for too me. much. Yeah, that's too far. That's too I far. haven't watched the actual show. I only watch Cody Ko's like reactions <laughs> to each episode. Yeah. Um, and it, it's it's so bad. It's so incredibly uncomfortable. And like I'm also just like picturing maybe Mitch, you said this last time we were talking about it. Like if it was reversed, like if it was like young, almost underage girls and like older yeah. guys, that would have never been enough come out of no for way. sure. And but like it that de- but like on the same hand though it this shouldn't have gotten through either. No, yeah, it, it shouldn't. It just yeah. flipping it just shows how that would be outrageous, and it's like people should feel yeah. kind of the same either way. Yeah. Um, it's but just I feel like outrageous. yeah, outrageous. yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel like we've covered a good amount of the dating <laughs> shows. Um, so let's move on to maybe a more recent phenomenon with reality TV. 
workplace reality <laughs> shows. Now there's a lot of like dads who watch workplace type reality shows and they wouldn't really consider a reality show because a lot of people when they think of it think of like the bachelor or whatever but there's there's all sorts of uh like have you seen like, swamp people alex no no i oh, um come on when, when i think of reality shows like i know um like you're saying the different ones like my mind goes to the dating reality shows but there's like so many subgenres. like mm. i remember watching like um well, lifestyle like duck dynasty i remember watching that a while ago yeah. that was funny mm. I, I love that dynasty. i used we, to have my parents and i love duck dynasty i know they have they've done many things since then that are not <laughs> we don't actually crazy. stand the duck dynasty thing we like the campiness but i used duck to love dynasty. that show and my mom got me for christmas these hot pink duck slippers and they had Psychotic the duck behavior. dynasty banner across like the duck's head did it say like happy 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 did it? It might have. Because my, my, my brother has a bunch. Of, he has some merch. Was like he gets some jokes, gifts, and it said "Happy, Happy, Happy." Because that's what like Phil says all the time. Right. But yeah, sorry, Mitch. You're saying workplace, workplace stuff. Yeah, sorry, that's all right. <laughs> um, well, the also like Deadliest Catch is a big yeah. one. I can't believe you haven't seen Swamp People, Alex. That's a great show. It's about these uh, guys in like Louisiana, I think, and they're they they hunt gators because there's too many, so you get paid to bring gators in um and then they obviously sell the meat and stuff like gator but skin boots you know that goes for a lot Why not? all sorts of things they do that now with pythons there's a show about pythons in florida because oh, wow. a few people had them and then let them out and then they've mated and they're an, an invasive species so there's just like thousands of giant pythons in florida so it's the same idea as alligator hunters but with pythons and they catch them like with their bear they're like Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> like that it's hilarious but i hate snakes catching snakes is interesting it's tough head mm. and tail i grab it or like shark week is that would that count i've never watched no. it i know my dad watches it i don't is think that reality me. tv or is that something like a, kind of a bit of a workplace one like they just kind of <laughs> yeah. like shark week is also like playing jaws yeah so, so like there's certain reality shows like fishing reality stuff for like sharks it could be like yeah. yeah deadliest catch is one of those things that would uh -huh. be on shark week stuff like that mm -hmm. so okay but i guess one of the more popular i mean there's a few i guess you could say pretty much any hgtv show a lot of them are kind of workplace <laughs> reality shows um because they're not like fully scripted at least oh yeah um, my parents go absolutely ham for hgtv mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like my dad would like it was like this whole thing where my mom loved it and like used it as like ideas to get my dad to do around the house but it was also like my dad would watch it to judge them and how they did it because he thinks he can do it better. Mm -hmm. And there was this one guy, I think, I think uh, his name's like Brian or something. I think one of the shows right now is called like yeah. Life with Brian. He's bald and like Canadian. Yeah. Right now they have a hotel like in the Bahamas, I think. Mm -hmm. But they used to do this thing where they would go, like the first show is that they would go to people's houses who needed something to be renovated. And then he would pick one room to like basically renovate. And he always picked the bathroom and he always did this thing where you could heat the floor of a bathroom. Oh, heated floors, yeah. Whole tiles. Oh. And that would literally, like my dad would literally like ascend in anger. He was like, so he hated it every week. He was like, this guy's a fucking moron. Like, why would you spend all these people's money on like heating the floors? That's such a stupid thing. And like- he Heated floors are nice though. You ever been on a but, heated bathroom floor? But like at the same time though, these people are like giving you all this money and like what they want is like their bedroom or their like living room done. And then he would do the bathroom. Oh, so he's like, okay, here's the money, but I only know how to do bathrooms. So let's do that. Yeah. Kind of thing. Uh, that sucks. Well, I would not be happy if that was the case. It was like, basically, I think the way that it would work is like you gave him like three options and he would pick one mm -hmm. and he picked the bathroom more than anything else. And you would like put money into things that are just kind of nonsense and like you don't really need them. And it would literally piss my dad off so much. <laughs> like, why do you watch it? Yeah. Well, another workplace show that probably my favorite reality show mm -hmm. and is pretty popular would be Below Deck. That's probably my favorite reality show. It's like the perfect, like I know Andy, and I've heard Andy Coe and I heard him on a podcast and he said it's like, it's like a great straight guy reality show. Cause like, that's the one straight guys always come up to him about because it's like, 
it has the drama and like idiot like nonsense like some other reality shows because the people on it are like very good looking horny and they all have like um what do you call it it's like in uh, the shining what do you call it like because they're stuck on that boat Oh, like a uh, cabin fever or like, yeah, like cabin fever. Like, yeah, cabin so fever. you just put these people and then, you know, it's like animals, right? Like <laughs> basically, because they spend 24 hours a day on that boat. Um, but it's also interesting because it's like kind of a, it's a job you would know nothing about. That's actually pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. And you also see like how the guests are, right? All these like rich people who are very unique. Uh, but Megan, you've seen Below Deck. Yes, my mother loves that show. So every time I'm home, I watch it with her. They have like a bunch of different versions of it now. Mm -hmm. Like the yacht or what there's like, there's, yeah. I don't, there's they have sailing yacht. There's like the regular one, Mediterranean. That's so I, I haven't seen it. So for any, for uh, me and the viewers, what is like the rundown of the show? Like, how does it go? Well, it's What's like, it, it just really follows like a super yacht where it's like you have people who come on for like 48 hours at a time. Like that's the, the way it works. Different guests, right? And so you have like the interior staff who are in charge of like serving the people and, and that and like right. they have to prepare events and stuff. And you have the people outside who have to clean the boat and like do the anchor and the lines and everything and also set up all like the the like sea dues and slides and stuff like that so it sounds quite simple but it's actually pretty interesting like the way they put it all together because also the people who do it when you watch below deck i think everyone will watch it and be like wow that would be a cool job for a bit but the more you think about it it's like no that's why there's not that many people who, who yeah. do it and that's part of the fun is like it's this giant yacht <laughs> that's worth like a hundred million dollars and there's people working on it who are just completely incompetent because like <laughs> they don't get many people interested in the job. Right. So it's not very hard to get the job and like work your way up pretty quickly. No. So it's actually quite interesting. I find. Yeah. And then they'll have, they also have like a cook, like a chef who's on the staff and depending on the shows you watch, it tends to be the chefs that kind of cause a lot of the drama. They're in like their own department. Like there's only one for the whole boat. So it's a super stressful job, but their personalities tend to be hit or miss with the rest of the boat of the mm -hmm. ones that my mom has watched anyways and what I've seen. And then there's the captain. And I know Captain Sandy, I think she might be the, like the original the original show. She's like one of the main- I think she was the second one, but yeah, I mean, one of the first for sure. Uh, well, there's a guy who's a captain too, and there's a few others, but, and then they're kind of like the boss, like they run everything. Uh, but yeah, it's like a, a bunch of, tend to be like 25 to like early mid thirties. And some of them are like really passionate about sailing and they love being on the water and like they do really well. And then some of it, it's like people who just wanted to come for like, traveling purposes which like that makes sense but that's on a small boat with a bunch of rich people who probably aren't very nice mm -hmm. so I always like when the guests are kind of crazy if they show that part of the guest it just makes for good tv it, it makes Honestly, for good TV. crazy I'm people on camera now. um I saw one clip I think it's one of the original shows there's like guests that brought on like drugs like illegal drugs to the boat and they had to like the captain found out and you had to turn them around and they got into this big fight they've also like forgotten speed on the water and like jet skis mm -hmm. it, like, i think it was the staff's fault but they let the skidoos like float out into the water that was bad mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> um i also saw an episode where a bunch of the staff because if they're just kind of there to party and they don't care about their job they'll take like a boat sometimes when they're like helping guests but they'll just kind of like boat off and jet off alone and start drinking um and so i also saw a clip of like when they kind of got lost and the captain was looking for them and they were just like out drinking on a boat in the middle of like <laughs> the bahamas somewhere nice oh why not um, and of course they all like sit with each other and then there's drama because some of them sleep with the wrong like other people and there's cheating it's get it's lovely yeah <laughs> it's lovely it's it's got something for everyone um mm -hmm. And it, uh, yeah, I definitely would say it's my favorite. And then I guess, I guess kind of one other workplace one that's quite popular would be Say Yes to the Dress. 
I watched it like as a kid a bit, like because my yeah. mom would just have it on. Um, but man, I feel like that show was just like people at home, just like judging the hell out of other people, which That's is like a little strange. Well, yeah, but- and then like you're a kid and you're like, wow, that budget's really low, and it's like fourth grade. <laughs> that dress is so yeah. ugly. They yeah. they were also really bad. One thing I didn't know, um, and we'll talk about Jersey Shore eventually, but Mike the Situation's sister was on Say Yes to the Dress. Who's? Really? Yeah, Mike, Mike the Situation. Oh. His sister was on Say Yes to the Dress. Like Melissa, I think the one that hooked up with Vinny. Oh. <laughs> but it's like, um, yeah, I think there's like, the thing about reality TV too is that a lot of the same people do different shows. Yeah. yeah you become like a cast you become yeah like you become a reality tv person and then you end up on a lot of different things mm-hmm. for sure well i guess alex this may be more in your wheelhouse we can talk about some of the competition reality shows i feel like there's something in the, in some sort of reality competition show people like there's a lot on this list um there's cooking ones like top chef uh survivor yeah. which is the kind water. of kind of more just like strategic and mm-hmm. politicky mm-hmm. and petty and then you have like amazing race which is like a real competition um and then there's also the talent shows like america's got talent the voice american idol i must say i was never big on like american idol or the voice mm-hmm. i don't know mm-hmm. why um Love it. part partly i don't know i just found it kind of cringy but also like there was a there was a few people on American Idol who got big um in the first few seasons but I feel like in the last like 10 years I don't know anyone from those shows who have gotten big because it's so easy now to put your music (laughs) out there like chances are you'll be found before you have to go on a show like that you know wait yeah those competition shows Oh, so those competition shows, this is how I got into like, I guess, reality TV. Like, this is what I, what I consider reality TV for me because it's what I've seen the most. Uh, mm-hmm. Survivor was one of the first ones too. That was like the late nineties, I think yeah. when it started early two thousands. That was what I enjoyed that. I watched that. I, I loved it. Um, yeah. And like American Idol and like X Factor, all these like, comp- like, mm-hmm. like performing shows. I liked it as a kid. Cause I used to like sing and perform a lot when I was younger. And so I really like seeing it. And so it was just cool to see uh, people rallying behind an artist and like, getting noticed like i know like didn't harry styles um yeah you know, an x factor or something like that that's how i got discovered right so alex alex why didn't capital behavior ever go on x factor or american idol or any of those shows well american uh, idol is only creative, single, differences, so Mitch. Uh, creative differences, creative differences. Uh, uh, you know you know how it goes canadian idol too, canadian too idol? corporate too corporate for you guys what was the key one the capital behavior come on the next star. The next star. Oh, I, the next star. I watched it as a kid. Yeah, me too. I watched I remember it that. as a kid. I'm like, I'm like, I can do that. They come to Toronto. And like, I didn't end up, I was obviously way too shy as a kid to do that. I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, yeah. And then uh, I remember Survivor was big. Amazing Race. Amazing Race Canada. This is the one I recently watched. I watched Amazing Race Canada for the first like three or four seasons now. And mm-hmm. um, I don't know. Oh, it's just, nice. I really enjoyed that. I put on an episode of Amazing Race Canada and I couldn't stop laughing um, because it is so just like the, it's the ultimate like Canada's just like diet America where the challenges and stuff were so amateur like they were on like, yeah. they're on like a like military base or something that was like the size of a preschool and the challenges they were doing, they were doing like some sort of like obstacle training course. And it was like, jump over this three foot wall, army crawl 10 feet. And like, it was just, I I was watching and I was like, I could do that. Like that, that can't, that that should not be a challenge, but I guess it's fun because obviously like they go to small places in Canada, but don't they still go international sometimes or no? They they Um, do. Oh, I don't think. In in the third or fourth season, they switched it up because they're like, we can't just stay in Canada because you're gonna see the same thing. So they're like, let's go. You can only go to Moncton so So. many times. There you go. The best was when we like were like, what if we just watched an episode of The Amazing Race one day and then we watched multiple seasons? Like like it became obsessive for like five days. Such a good show. It's good. It's addictive. And then you like Mm -hmm. root for your teams. Um, Yeah. Yeah, the last winners of 
uh, Amazing Race Canada from Winnipeg. I know her. And I saw them at the airport when they were filming when I flew yeah. back during oh, COVID. Oh, yeah, I remember you telling me. I saw them at the security line and they had the, uh, like the couples, like they're, cause they're all dressed kind of, they also have like kind of like some type of uniform or a different color. But then mm-hmm. they had the, like the camera crew like with them, like with the huge mics mm-hmm. and the cameras and they mm-hmm. took forever to get through security. My favorite part obviously. is when they, like the flights. Like I love when they have to get the flights and it always messes them up. Mm-hmm. Like it's like, it's such an uncontrollable part of the trip because mm-hmm. you're not like running, but it's like so funny about the ones who do get on the good flight versus the yeah. wrong one. And like the different travel agents, like that one always makes me laugh. That's, 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 a, funny. Sorry, that's what bugged me about Amazing Race Canada because they, they all got on the same flight eventually or something. They do that. Whereas like Amazing Race, because I don't, haven't seen Amazing Race that often. I think I've seen a couple episodes, but the original one, there was like, they didn't help you with the air travel at all, right? It's like you yeah, you just went. Yeah. And especially flying international too, like mm-hmm. it's a lot more sporadic compared to just like different layovers, Canada. delays, uh-huh. like all that. Different stuff. Sometimes trains even yeah. was like part of it. I don't think I could ever do that though. I don't know if no. I could handle the, the anxiousness of not being like having a schedule. I think I would not do well. No, Alex, we you should do it. You could get on. My my um mom actually met John Montgomery. She actually met him in person, uh, mm-hmm. and then said uh, he's like, "I'll see your boys on the mat." Because like my brother and I wanted to go to Amazing Race Canada, so you should It'd be good yeah. pub- publicity. For the podcast. Yeah, I would love to. She, yeah, I was like, I'll, I'll put in a picture. I'll show you guys. But like, yeah, it would be good content. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm, I don't. I don't think we would thrive in that environment at all. You could never do that. No. No. Physically, mentally, would emotionally. It would kill me. No. Big, big thing is uh, map reading too. People don't. Uh, people don't know you can't well, have your I phone. I can read a map. You, right? I'm not so. a total moron. It's just. Like... Mm, you don't have. How many times have you read a physical map? It's harder I, than it looks. You would like, be surprised. My dad has made me read maps before. All right. Well, oh, yeah, really like topography and everything in the map. So, yeah. I think where the reason why I always thought it'd be so fun, and my dad has joked that he would go on it, and if you have met my dad, he'd be absolutely terrible. Oh, so bad. He on Amazing survive. Race. But the ones, because sometimes they make them like towards the end of the show, they'll do like some kind of like crazy challenge, like shaving off all your hair. <laughs> Nice. I would I don't care that's I can't I can't do that no. hey quarter million dollars I'll shave my hair I loved what was, there was that one episode that was so funny the one where they had to sing oh yeah they had to like sing in German and yeah, none of them good. could oh. sing really well that was so I remember Jeez. that was a funny one that we all that when good. we watched that together mm-hmm. Alex what do the Amazing Race Canada contestants win like a Tim Hortons gift card or <laughs> What well, get? you're I, actually you're you're not far off there. It was they win like I think a Petro Canada gift card or something like that, and they win like an F one fifty and I think a quarter million dollars. No, like two fifty really? Yeah, it's only, it's only a quarter million I think. Um, or no, half a million they split it or something like that. Where like Amazing Race, I don't know how much you win there. Is it like a like a like a cold million kind of thing or? I think it's a million. That's actually really? not too bad. I guess amazing race Canada prize, but yeah. And how long does it usually take to film? Like a couple weeks if you make it to the end, at least. I think it's a couple weeks. Yeah, you do get a a month that you're gone. Yeah, there's like ten legs of the race, I think, and it's like constantly going. I think there's only a couple days rest between each. Uh, I'm not sometimes not, but uh, I just remember the amazing race Canada. Everyone's like so nice to each other at the beginning, (laughs) and they're like making huge alliances, and obviously it breaks down and stuff. But I just love seeing like the like the one or two groups of people who are just like complete narcissists, and you see them just like come in and they're like, "We're gonna win." And I just yeah. I, I end up rooting against those people. Well, they mm-hmm. always end up kind of like never really winning. I remember one of the seasons yeah. that we watched. I think when they did the singing, there was the two. Yeah, the ones who did win. Yeah, was they was kept like... accidentally getting through those two guys? Were they a couple, or was it the best friends? Anyway, they weren't. Friends. They weren't the most physically agile team I think I remember compared to because then there was that couple a uh, wife and a husband and they were super competitive yeah and he was such a dick to her yes and then they just kind of accidentally won like they well they kept no. accidentally getting in place because like a taxi would somebody else's taxi would break down and they'd pass them yeah. or somebody would help them or they'd finally figure out how to blow up a balloon the season that we watched though was the one where the two exes won where they had signed a contract that the girl like of the ex 
is the one where she would get more. I think you're talking about different seasons. We're talking about different seasons. Because yeah. the one Megan's talking about was a couple that was like from Boston and they, they were like very athletic. That was a different season. I don't know. We've watched, no, we've watched multiple seasons. The season I'll Megan's talking about had, 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 okay. had the black couple where the guy was not very nice. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That but athletic that couple from Boston. As the girl with the pink hair. Oh with yeah, the exes. Okay, yeah. That's no, what so I was thinking about. Oh, so no. it was the same season. No, they I did didn't. not win. That oh. couple did not win. That couple didn't win. Maybe that was a different season, but they did not win because that was the season that the Afghanimals were in, and that's who Chase and I are rooting for. Right, right. Yeah. Forgot about the Afghanimals. Yeah. yeah. I wish they had won. Race. They got amazing screwed. race. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing, amazing race Canada. No, amazing, amazing race. race. Amazing race. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. But uh oh well. I mean, they always like. They try to make it look like everyone can win, but I feel like they kind of got screwed with some of those roadblocks. I I could I could never do these breaks. I would just like I get so angry. Um, I feel like as soon as a flight's delayed, you'd be like, "I'm tapping out." Yeah. Well, we're, like, we're having airport beer no, and just chill. This is where I the, leave. <laughs> one of the seasons we watched, like these two guys, they're in like Turkey or something, and for some reason they just could not get a flight, like period, mm-hmm. till like the next day. And they were there like the same time as other people, and then they're out, and it's like okay, like two NFL players, their flights. I think it was them. Their flights. Yeah, got that was and them. And then the host had to come to the airport, and he was like, the, "Everybody passed the finish line. Like you're done." I would wow. have suckered him in the mouth if that happened to me. I would have been like, <laughs> fucker, yeah. fucker, God. But anyway. I guess we can talk about like some lifestyle shows because there's a few big ones. We'll end with their favorite, the probably the main reason this you guys wanted to come on the show. Um, I guess the biggest one would be keeping up with the Kardashians. Um have you ever watched it? I've never been to Kardashians, yo. Me neither. I'm not a Kardashian. I'm uh, that surprises me. That surprises me. From both um, of them? Well, from Megan. Yeah, but yeah. That's what I was gonna say. No, I, 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 I thought one of you at least see it. Yeah. Like I stay I, up with the drama a little bit because I have a lot of friends that watch Card- the Kardashians. The I've seen like things. clips and stuff, and I do like am mildly entertained yeah. by it, but like no, so there's a certain level of brain rot that I think would like set in with the Kardashians specifically because it's the thing about these lifestyle shows a lot of the time is that a lot of the time it's featuring people who are like super loaded. And so like half the time when they're really loaded Mm -hmm. they're like complaining about really stupid things a lot of the time yeah which Mm -hmm. gets very annoying just 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 like complain about first world problems and it's like oh no i can't believe like you know i got here like five minutes late it's like i don't know they're just they're just just, i I just think of the kardashians as like what why what made them famous like why are we watching them like well kim was paris hilton's assistant, assistant and then she had her porno leaked mm-hmm. that was it <laughs> and that's and that's what made famous and i'm like well the thing is out of all the kardashians the most talented one is the mom because she marketed yeah. all of her kids to be billionaires who have no talent mba i'm oh, sorry i'm sorry like an mba well, that's the to... best what do you mean what mba i thought she's nba, NBA. No, i was like are you talking about fucking basketball <laughs> <laughs> Because she needs like a honorable doctorate in like business management or something. Because she yeah. she teaches a master class in like project organization, whatever. And like but like they were also famous crazy. because Robert Kardashian, like their father, was their brother like best friends oh. with oh. no, Never yeah. Mind. I'm not talking Sorry. about the brother, I'm talking about the Sorry. father who yeah. died. Like he was best friends with OJ Simpson, mm-hmm. and so was part of his legal team during the huge trial. And like Chris Jenner was like there along with him. Mm-hmm. And then that was before they even got divorced. And the kids were like teenagers at the time. Mm-hmm. So like they were always sort of like um, Hollywood socialites, even if they were not necessarily mm-hmm. like in the spotlight. Mm-hmm. It was, they're just nepotism babies. They're just growing up in the spotlight because they're yeah. famous parents, mm-hmm. I guess. And then I, I yeah, I've seen it. Uh, I was kind of forced to see it. Uh, watching it with someone I also had to watch a bit of Chloe and Lamar which was uh, interesting Um, I actually preferred Chloe and Lamar but maybe that was just because I like basketball but um, 
yeah, they don't have talent. Like Chris Jenner is the only one who's talented. Like I can assure you, which is fine. Like there's no problem. I'm not very talented, but, but like, it's funny when like people are like girl boss, like some, some of the stuff where it's like, that's amazing. And it's like, they had nothing to do with it. They're like a massive brands, like companies come to them with stuff to do like products to create right. right and it works so they make a lot of money so like good for them like i'm not hating on them but it's I not like they invented a product or something yeah like her her like makeup and stuff yeah, like, she has mm-hmm. her makeup company but she forbes named her as like one of the youngest self-made, self-made billionaires, billionaires and yeah, then everybody like, was like no no like that, <laughs> okay just, self-made yeah that's a thing and it's i'm not trying to like hate on them it's more just annoying because it's like it's totally yeah. unfair to like other real business owners Mm-hmm. whereas for like, like i'm not trying to throw shots or anything but it's like i don't like i think someone probably came to her with everything sort of mm-hmm. made ready to go and it's like you just promote it and everything because mm-hmm. she's obviously a big star but just just sour grapes yeah. you know well, like company i only know this that to a project on it but they come like color pop cosmetics yeah color pop it's kind of like a much cheaper it's not it's not in drugstores, but it's sold online, but it's a cheaper makeup brand. The company that runs ColourPop also owns and makes, well, doesn't own, but makes the makeup for Kylie's brand. But their price differences are like- Massive. Massive. Yeah. It's like the same thing of like the same people that own Victoria's Secret also own La Senza. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. but it's like a huge di- like price difference. So it's yeah, probably- just the, the brand, yeah. Stuff. Yeah. It's just yeah. the brand associated brand, yeah. with it. Um, or there was a big thing too. Kim was on a podcast and I mean, she's had, she's like, people don't want to work anymore. <laughs> yeah. Like, she was what? hating on people for not working hard enough anymore. And that was its own thing yeah. issue <laughs> by itself. Yeah. Um, like Kim's done some cool stuff. Like I know that she's like becoming a lawyer. She's mm-hmm. a lot more invested in helping people who are wrongfully incarcerated mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And, you know, Kanye's a douchebag so I feel for her and yeah not I, I, I think so I just think it's really funny how like there's a video of Kim I think it's something like five or six years ago where they're in the car with their kid and then uh, she's talking to her kid saying like oh you know and daddy's just a very successful musician blah 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 and mommy um mommy's uh <laughs> mommy's really talented in a lot of things and she does and she just can't think of one thing and I'm like oh geez See, that, really- that's a funny around tv I love it yeah, yeah. It, it, it kind of just tells you a little bit about probably her life where like her kind of like hobby or thing she decided to randomly pursue in her like late 30s was like I want to go to law school and be a lawyer and it's like that's totally possible because of the money that she has in the connections that and she's like never gone to school so it's not like she's yeah. like whereas like we've gone to, like we've all gone to school in some like degree and it's like you're probably just like, I, I don't want to go to school anymore, right? Like at some point, but for her, it was like, she's never really had to do that sort of thing where you have to like be consistent at something like every day and work quite hard. So that was almost like kind of a a campy thing to do almost in a way. But, you know, if it does good, then great. I'm not trying to be a hater or anything. I, I couldn't care less, but well, you guys have, I'm proud of you guys, um, Julia and Megan. Because we've gone this whole time and we only had one reference to Jersey Shore. And that was the main reason <laughs> we wanted to come on the podcast. <laughs> so I think we should just let them cook. Dive right into it. Yeah. yeah. Mitch, we'll take it, we'll take a back seat and they're gonna teach us about Jersey Shore. So Alex is gonna go uh, mail something. Um, yeah. is, it, is it the Unabomber manifesto? <laughs> is that what he means? No, a bomb. Oh, okay. <laughs> Straight to the point. Yeah. Um, well, I've actually never watched the first season because you guys started before right. okay. I joined in. So I don't actually know the initial setup. So maybe you right. guys want to take so it like, the first season. So like basically what happened, this is how we came about watching Jersey Shore is like, it was right before school started in our last year living together. And it was like, I said, I kind of want to watch Jersey Shore because I've heard that it's funny. And then I was like, I'm just going to put it on the TV. And then Mitch was downstairs. I don't know where you were. You might have been cooking or like Not in your, probably in your, the hole in your room mm-hmm. hiding. Yeah. So then Mitch was downstairs and you come upstairs and Jersey Shore's on the TV and you're like, oh my God. Like, because you watched it growing up. I watched it when it came out with my brother. Like yeah. 
when I was like nine years old, we watched Secretly in Our Basement when I was like 10. And I would say that show made me a man. Totally. <laughs> and then it was like, I think we watched the full first season like that day or like that day and the next day. Mm-hmm. And then by season two, you came upstairs and you were like, this seems kind of crazy. And we were like, no, like sit down. Well, at I first Megan was like, no, I'm too good to watch this. I know. Nonsense. But you watched 90 day fucking fiance. That's different. <laughs> okay. So then basically it just became this like we're going to the shore it became an obsession and uh we watched the whole thing we tried jersey shore family vacation but it's a little rough i'm actually watching it by myself now because it's nice and nonsense to have in the background and oh boy have they been up to some shit recently (laughs) they're all broke (laughs) no they are not Why the show happens well yeah the show happens because they're all broke and then now they're not but it is it's wild. Let Should we each pick? So basically, the premise of the show, mm-hmm. like why, like why did Jersey Shore start? Mm-hmm. It was just MTV. I think wanted to have a bunch of. Basically, they did like an open casting call for like Guidos and like specific kind of people who frequent the Jersey Shore in like New Jersey, and then the open casting call brings out the most insane fucking people on the planet, and then you put the most. But this is like the origin of like good reality TV because most reality TV now has tried (laughs) to replicate it, has not been able to come up with something that works in the way that this did, and in the same way that it's like they brought in the most absolutely insane people and then they put them in a house together and like locked the door and threw away the key. Mm -hmm. And it just creates the most insane situations into that. Like, and these people are like, none of them are loaded. They didn't get paid. I don't think until the second season, second or third season. Well, I saw a podcast with Polly D, who mm-hmm. I think might be him and Snooky might be the most like recognizable names, like yeah. DJ Polly D. I mm-hmm. saw he was on a podcast and he was explaining because I guess he was DJing before the show started. Mm-hmm. And so a casting director had reached out to him or he had it was a bit of both. And they said, do you want to come film this show? And so I guess MTV put them in a house mm-hmm. and then it's like all kind of like 20 year olds, young teens, kind of Polly was the oldest, though. And they just party. They sometimes go to work. And yeah, they had they to work at the t-shirt shop on the shore. And then when you did like different seasons, like when they were in Miami, they worked at a gelato shop. When they went to mm-hmm. Italy, they worked at a pizza shop, which um, is just funny that they make them work. Yeah, but I guess that was like part of the premise. You see how their lives were. And I guess MTV didn't tell them for sure it was being aired. And then all of a sudden, Paulie saw that he was on TV like mm-hmm. months later. And mm-hmm. then it kind of blew up. But yeah, you're right. They didn't really probably get like fully paid until later and then the mm-hmm. show blew up but uh, I don't know do we want to go over like our favorite events in this show one thing I would like to do at some point um mm-hmm. but first off Julia as an Italian North American was <laughs> it nice to finally be represented oh completely um, I feel seen I feel heard I feel like the Italians finally have their spotlight um, they're the perfect people to represent you yeah, yeah mm-hmm. that's exactly what it is when they do, when they do the Sunday dinner. Yeah, when they throw bottles of wine at each other at Sunday dinner, mm-hmm. that's what it feels like in my home. So when they put all the cheese in Mike's sheets, <laughs> I forgot about that. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, they're uh, animals, but uh, absolutely insane. One thing I did want to do, it'll probably be just us three. No offense, Alex, because I'm not sure if you know the characters. That's fine. I'm just learning right now. We could do a short, quick little draft, two characters each. Now, there's only like nine, really. Yeah. Yeah. But you could go off the board and pick a supporting character if you'd like. Um, But we'll definitely have to do a snake draft. So it would be like one, like Julia, Mitch, Megan, Megan, Mitch, Julia, like that formation that's you style. guide us well, we'll yeah you we'll guide us on. okay um we'll, we'll so let's just that. do let's do julia first okay megan second me third and then i'll tell you how it goes from there are we Maybe. doing like favorite characters or are we just like highlighting like, like 
best favorite whatever you want and it's only going to be two so i personally i love dina she only comes in in the third season she's one of two meatballs with snooki um she kind of comes in because angelina's there and then is gone and then is like an absolute psychotic person Mm -hmm. and dina is incredibly dumb (laughs) but she's also very nice her first night there she absolutely takes off her bikini in front of mike the situation oh yeah and just totally strips and like recently i saved a picture of something that she says in an interview because it made me piss myself laughing she says i mean i know i'm not the brightest crayon box but this isn't rocket scientist Mm. (laughs) it doesn't doesn't check out she says stuff like you're an annoying all the time Mm -hmm. Mm. like she has a very specific way of doing things and it's so funny um she gets arrested after going absolutely insane on a meatball day by herself in Mm -hmm. the last season did did you say meatball day yeah Yeah. which is basically just that she goes on a bender so snooki do you know do you recognize the name snooki alex she's probably like one of the bigger members i know I know. So, I mean, at this point, you guys here. No, I don't. How about how would I list all the cast members too? I feel like we haven't we haven't done that yet. So DJ Polly D and Snooki, I believe, are the two highest paid. Yeah. They're also probably the two most popular mm-hmm. characters in the show. Um, and Snooki's they're very short, and so that's why they call themselves Meatballs. Her and Dina, because they're two very they're short. Super foodettes. short. They love to party. They're very loud. So they have Meatball days where they just like. They, they go like on a crazy for party. Like 48 hours. They're just short and Italian is why they're called meatballs. Yeah. Um, so there's DJ Polly D, Snooki, Dina, who is Julia's favorite. Mm-hmm. There's also um, Sammy, Sammy Sweetheart. Ooh, Sammy. One of, that was Mitch's favorite growing up. Mm-hmm. She's one of the other core girls. She's like, they all have catchphrases. Hers is like, I'm the sweetest bitch you'll yeah, ever meet. Yeah. She's just insane. Mm-hmm. And there's Jenny who is kind of Jay Wow, who is kind of like definitely the more rough around the edges. She'll beat anybody up. Yeah. She's, I think the tallest out of them. Mm -hmm. Like you do not want to mess with Jay Wow. Then the other two guys, there's, or three guys, there's Mike, the situation, who is also famous because he's the one that went to prison for a hot second later. That's later though. That's later. So there's Mike. Then there is Ronnie who dates Sam and is insane they you you call them ron pages when yeah which is a rampage he's like ron. a little bit she's a little bit short but he's super jacked and very aggressive. he looks like he man he's yeah. like he is 100 percent on steroids yeah <laughs> and then Vinny, um mm-hmm. who is one of my personal favorites but yes. Vinny and paulie d are like besties yeah and then you have like mvp which is what mike Vinny, and Polly call each other or you have rsvp which is ronnie the situation, Vinnie Polly. Yeah. So that's kind of the core house. There's other characters that come in and out, but that's like the core group of people. Yeah. So her favorite is Dina, who's kind of like the stupid meatball. Yeah. Meatball. I would say if I had to pick one favorite. You do have to pick. We're doing a draft. Well, yeah, yeah. Don't forget that. By the way, Dina as the first pick was outrageous, but continue. <laughs> I, I, wanted, I wanted to give her the spotlight. I think I'd have to pick... I do love Vinny, but I would I would pick Polly as my like Damn. favorite. Damn, um, that's what I wanted. All I right, can switch. You want me to switch? Nope, that's all right. Yeah. Uh, so I have back to back picks. That's the way a snake draft works, and then we go back to Megan and then back to Julia. <laughs> which is why you don't take someone who probably would have gone undrafted first overall. Okay. But I went we know for next time. It's them. your list. No, that's good. That's what we want. Uh, with my two. Uh, I will go pretty easy for me. I will go Vinny and Snooky, a great duo. They okay. sort of dated, very likable. I it wanted Polly. They won't they? Enemies Polly to Vinny, but I'm happy. I'm happy with Vinny and Snooky. I'm very happy with that duo. So Megan, your pick. So just to clarify, I cannot pick who's already been said, right? <laughs> yes. How that work? <laughs> That's how logic. <laughs> we don't do drafts and dance. I don't. What does this. dance have to do with this? That's not what reference. Okay. Anyways, um, then I would pick Ronnie. 
<laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. He's, I think he'd be a fun time. He makes me no, laugh. I'm scared of him. Ronnie, when he's not with Sammy, is he's seems fun. pretty Ron Ron? fun. Ron yeah. Ron is funny. Yeah. Like he's yeah. fine when he's not with Sammy. Oh, Ronnie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When he's at bed. All right, like, Julia. The club bed in Miami when he's cheating on Sammy and oh. he's like kissing two girls at the same time. And then that's when the note comes in. Oh, they don't, they don't know that. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> All right, Julia. Oh. And then I would pick Wow from there. Oh, yeah. shit. I forgot about Jenny. I love Jenny. <laughs> I think that, okay. I just didn't want to pick Sammy. No, we're not picking Sammy in this household. Like, I think that Wow, like, she will beat the shit out of you. Granted, in the first season, she absolutely backhands Mike in an insane way. Every single fight that Jenny gets into with one of the girls, the only reason no one ends up with a black eye is because the security guards come in and pull them apart and every time Angelina because she does it with Angelina and Sammy they both think they won the fight and it's like they literally they they accomplish nothing whereas like they have two security guards pulling back and like Vinny pulling back Wow. whereas everybody else is like like Ronnie grabs Sammy and Sammy's like uh, you you thought you could get me and it's like no if you just let her go Sammy would probably be dead <laughs> but she also, even though she's insane in the way that she would literally be- beat the shit out of anybody, she also take cares, takes care of everybody. Mm. Like she definitely takes care of the meatballs. Yeah. All the time when they do something stupid. Like she would like, she's so intense in a way that she's very protective of the people she cares about at the same time. Yes. So I like well, to recap our duos. Julia has Dina and Jay Wow. I feel good about that. Dina, good at <laughs> Snooky and Jay Wow. Uh, Polly and Ronnie for Megan, and I have Vinny and Snooky. I feel very good. I feel very good about my duo, but they're all good. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, maybe we'll have to have you on again for just a solo Jersey Shore uh, oh, we episode. Can totally once, once Alex watches the whole series. Hey, Alex. Once I finish, if we're in an episode, I'll watch it. I'll do my research. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for coming on, gals. That was fun.